I'd like to go back to uh, some interesting waves of immigration in prior years here yes. in the United States, the way you describe them so colorfully, uh, particularly uh, German migration and Irish Catholics. How would you characterize their respective contributions to the sociocultural fabric of America? Well, the Irish Catholics started coming over in large numbers in the mid-1840s to escape the nightmare of the potato famine. Ireland had a population of 8 million at the beginning of the 1840s. It's only 5 million today in the whole island of Ireland, including the Republic of Northern Ireland. Uh, and about a million people died in the famine. Another million people left Ireland. We had a huge migration. It was the first major migration of Catholics. The United States, uh, under the Constitution, has no religious test for public office. We have a provision in the Bill of Rights. No, Congress makes no law regarding an establishment of religion. But it was a predominantly Protestant country in terms of people's beliefs. And there was suspicion of the Catholic Church whose doctrines at that time were hostile to representative democracy, to our, system, our Republican small r system of government. And so there was a lot of suspicion. The Irish Catholics uh, originally, they, they came ill prepared. They settled in cities, not on farms. First migration group to settle prime, almost entirely in cities. Uh, they did have problems with crime and substance abuse. Those became less in time. They also participated heavily in urban political machines. Mm -hmm. They'd had political agitation in Ireland. They were experienced in this. They were good at it. Uh, and they set the tone of American urban political life. They set the tone of a lot of our popular culture. You know, the sidewalks of New York, all those things. Those old songs are Irish songs and were recognizably so to the Americans of a century ago. Uh, and the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the I Irish immigrants and uh, uh, were the main parishioners of and the main leaders of the Roman Catholic Church in the United States. So I sometimes say that the uh, capital of Irish America is St. Patrick's Cathedral, which uh, Bishop John Hughes uh, put uh, ostentatiously on New York's uh, major street right next to Commodore Vanderbilt's mansion. He said, we're, we're not going to be on a side street here like in, in Ireland. We're going to be on the main avenue here. And it's still there facing Rockefeller Center. And, and, and how does that contrast with the German immigration? What characterizes Well, the German immigrants, uh, some of them stayed in cities uh, in New York, but also in the Midwestern cities like Cincinnati, St. Louis, um, the, uh, Milwaukee. I mean, the Publisher Joseph Pulitzer got his start in America working for one of three German language newspapers in St. Louis. Uh, they also went to er rural areas, and particularly the upper Midwest, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, the Dakotas, became a kind of Germano Scandinavian America. They were joined by Scandinavians. The Germans came from war torn part of Europe, and in the United States, their descendants have been. Uh, the most pacifist or isolationist or dovish in our politics. They've been averse to wars and uh, wanting to find other alternatives other than military action. Some of that perhaps was sympathy with Germany in World War I, though there was no substantial German-American sympathy with the Nazis. A lot of German culture was kind of rubbed out of existence in kind of nasty episodes during World War I under the leadership of President Woodrow Wilson. We had. Uh, you know, they suppressed German language teaching in the schools. They suppressed uh, German organizations, the singing societies, the Turnverein, and so forth. Prohibition of alcohol uh, was opposed by the German Americans who tended to drink beer, though not necessarily in large quantities, but they thought beer was just a regular part of life. And uh, they didn't uh, like that at all. And so we have kind of lost, to some extent, German American traditions that were very vibrant uh, into the 20th century. The New York Yankees baseball stars, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, used to speak to each other in German. We've kind of forgotten that.